right. The agenda for today is kind of short. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some lessons learned from working with requirements. And it's mainly my own observations, I would say, but also what I've heard you know, discussed with other people. And uh, I'm going to talk about then kind of what I call this. I tried to put a name on, on it and uh, came up with an eye opening requirements modeling approach. And we're going to talk about uh, what is it, how does it work, how is something like uh, traceability handled, and uh, what do the requirements look like. And I have a very hands on example, so we're going to go through the process. And then just a short summary. Let's see if I can. There. This is an understatement, of course. Software is everywhere in all these uh, devices and machines and everything. If you think about it, all of these systems depend on the requirements, more or less. Of course, the more safety critical something is, uh, the more it depends on the requirements. And what I feel is that we, I ask myself all the time, how do we get the requirements right? And I feel that other people kind of do the same. We don't really know how to deal with the requirements. And especially when they are so important for success, it wouldn't be nice to get them right. And uh, of course, there is no silver bullet, but uh, what we're going to talk about today uh, hopefully will give us some good ideas. Uh, it was actually an eye-opener for me when I started uh, uh, using this approach that we're going to talk about today. So I hope, hopefully you get some good ideas as well. So what are some lessons learned or observations? As I said, uh, it's often unclear how to write requirements. I feel that we all struggle with this. We all know that uh, requirements uh, should be clear, correct, testable, measurable, organized, etc. But uh, that's easier said than done. And uh, we, another thing we, we do is we often use different words for the same things and the same word for different things. It just creates confusion, but it's kind of difficult to get out of also. And then the, also typically repeat the same information, uh, often in slightly different ways. And uh, that also adds to the confusion because it's kind of difficult to know what really it takes precedent if, if uh, you have two requirements that kind of are overlapping. They talk about the same thing, but in slightly different ways. So uh, in the end, if you take a step back, if you look at someone else's requirements, uh, they turn out to be kind of difficult to understand. It becomes difficult to review requirements. And we know that uh, these kinds of peer reviews are very important because when you write things, you get home lines. So you really need someone else to review what you've written. But uh, it turns out to be very difficult. And there are several reasons for that. Uh, one is that uh, typically you get a, a lot of kind of unclear requirements to review. To me, that I got 500 pages of requirements to review, and uh, you get a week to do it. And... Uh, if they're not uh, written in a very clear way, then it's very difficult to review them also. So not only do we get a lot of requirements, we have also have very little time to review them. If you look deeper into the problem, look at the format of the requirements. The format itself is often not good for understanding and review. It comes down to simple things like we use different words like shall, should, and uh, things like that. And it's unclear, what, is there a difference? Sometimes we start the requirement in one way, so the system shell. Sometimes the system shell is in the middle of the requirement. So it makes it just difficult to, to do things with it. I love Excel, for example. And uh, when I got those 500 pages of requirements, I tried to extract them and import them in, into Excel instead so I could kind of sort them and filter out. But it turns out to be difficult because of this formatting problem. And then another just the uh, uh, kind of uh, examples of problems, there's a lot of problems here, but the requirements are often not just in some kind of way, but they're spread out. So requirements are, uh, you can find one requirement on page three that talks about something, and then on page 55, there's another requirement that essentially talks about the same thing, but it might contradict the first requirement. And uh, then from a reviewing point of view, it becomes difficult. You have to remember what you read, or you have to do something with it, process it. Or so, uh, so that's also one reason uh, the requirements defects kind of slip by and in, into development because 
they're difficult to, to find. So uh, natural language, of course, is also tricky. We all like natural language. The formal languages are, are not so easy to deal with. And, and uh, here are two examples. Uh, let's not compare to let's eat grandma. So uh, I just want to show that there's just something simple like a comma can change the interpretation completely here in these cases. So, so if it change the, the the interpretation or how people different people interpret requirements, then uh, we can only imagine uh, what other things can how, how other things can influence the, the interpretations. So how do we deal with this? Here's a, a a sample requirement from a medical device that we worked with uh, that illustrates another issue. So the requirement says uh, the system shall display the patient's pulse rate. That's fine. And there's even a rationale. Uh, the why do we say this? Well, the operator needs to know the patient's health status. That seems to be reasonable. But there's a lot of open questions here. So. Uh, how often should we measure and how often should we refresh the display, for example? It's not explicitly said here. And the trick, tricky part here is that say that this is one requirement out of uh, 500. It turns out that we cannot, cannot just look at one requirement at a time because this, this other information could actually be specified in another requirement. So requirements had to be kind of viewed in a context of the other requirements. So it, it, easy thing to say, do we have enough information? Well, I'm not sure, I have to say. And it comes back to if you have a programmer who has to implement this, for example. That programmer might be junior, might not know that uh, he has to look at in other places of the requirements document to find more information and might just implement this and might measure and refresh the display you know, in an arbitrary way. So uh, just uh, a little bit, what are requirements then? Example here, but uh, to go back to some kind of formal definition. So this element is an expression of a system's desired behavior in order to satisfy its objective, so a world problem. So uh, they focus on the customer needs, not on the solution or implementation. So they specify what behavior the system should have without saying how the behavior will be realized. And the last thing is uh, we, uh, it's often problematic because uh, you, we, we try to, we often remember uh, systems that we've looked at and therefore kind of specify also how we want the behavior to be implemented. But we, we, we should refrain from and not impose a design on the solution, but the, let the developers do that or the designers do that. So what are kind of the bad side when requirements are bad? There's a lot of work. That's really what it comes down to. Several studies of the cost of uh, errors made during the requirement stage, and here's just a handful of them. So uh, these guys, they, they found that 40 to 70% of the defects found in the software product were due to errors made during the requirement stage. So that means that we introduce a lot of defects into the requirements. The requirements are not really good. And these uh, defects, they trickle down into design, implementation, and maybe out to the field too. And we look at the cost for this. Uh, Barry Beam at USC says that uh, uh, it's 10 times more expensive per phase to detect defects late. So what does it mean? Well. If we introduce a defect in the requirements phase and say it costs us $1 to fix it there, if we detect 